Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That's the problem with the internet, you're never quite sure, but it's good morning from me because it's morning here and a little cooler today, thank goodness, so I don't have to have the fan on, otherwise all you'd be able to hear was... <laughs> So it's Lynn from the Learn English Network again and um, again I'd just like to thank our sponsors Teacher Karen from Live English Training and Cambridge Proofreading and Malta Lingua, English Language School in Malta. Um, thanks guys, you make it possible for me to do this. And uh, to kick off, let's go to the live chat page. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what to call people who take part in the live chat page. Live chatters, I thought of, and then I thought, well, the opposite of that would be dead chatters, and that's not very nice, is it? So, it's been a busy week again. So I thought I'd start with a little um, explanation, I suppose, of what I'm doing on live chat. Um, you might be asking yourself, what are you doing on live chat? <laughs> Okay, it's a page on the Learn English Network website, one of them anyway, and it's where you can leave a message without joining a forum or anything like that. You can say hello, you can try and make contact, you can start a conversation, uh, but a lot of people seem to be starting conversations and then not finishing them or continuing them, so do keep an eye on it and um, just respond. You know, it's like a game of um, tennis, it's no fun if nobody hits the ball back to you. And uh, Aladdin, you might remember, joined us at the end of last week's session and wanted to know what was going on. He's confused about whether this is live, this recording is live or not. Unfortunately, it's not. We tried it, but there's too much lag. That's the time it takes for the message to arrive in live chat and the recording. Um, so we'd be spending most of our time sort of talking about things that have just happened and then not getting a response. So I record it just before the session goes out and then I'm on live chat to uh, text chat with you. As Aladdin found out last week when he went, um, I don't know, I'm listening now, but it is live now or recorded. Okay, if you want to make it into a question, you need to swap that round. Uh, I'm listening now, but is it live now or recorded? question mark. And yes, live chat was live now. I was chatting to Aladdin on live chat page right there and then, but the recording had been recorded about half an hour earlier. Okay, so um, I hope that's <laughs> understandable, Aladdin, because he did write, I'm trying to understand where am I? <laughs> well, if you don't know where you are, Aladdin, I'm not going to be able to help you. And don't forget your question marks, okay? It tells me it's a question. And um, so let's carry on. Uh, lots of highs from people, uh, Wang Ju, Mary, Lucas, and Wally. Is that like Wally? <laughs> My favourite film. <laughs> Well, one of them. And Linda. Linda wrote, Hi, I am Linda. I live in India. And uh, Zeb replied, Hi, Linda. My name's Zeb and I live in Paris, France. Today was hot in Paris with temperatures around 30 degrees centigrade. I wonder if 30 degrees centigrade would be hot for you as well. Mm, I wonder too. I doubt it. <laughs> I think people laugh at us uh, from other countries when we're going on about, oh, it's 30 degrees. I'm boiling. They're like, it's 52 here. I'm fine. Guys, you've got air conditioning. Uh, most of the people in Europe, certainly in England, we don't have air conditioning. We don't bother. It's not normally hot. So when it's 30 degrees, it's a lot hotter than you might think. <laughs> Be kind. Okay, so um, today was hot in Paris. Okay, yeah, it's okay, but it's not brilliant. It was hot in Paris today. Okay, I know Zeb loves me correcting her, and I'm sure she'll have something to say about that. So, it. When we say it was hot, you know we're talking about the weather, yeah? So, it was hot in Paris today. Good. And then Lucas wrote, hello there, I'm Brazilian and I'm learning to speak English. Anyone can help me learn. Okay, can anyone help me to learn? And I replied, we can help you to learn, uh, we can help you learn how to be an independent learner. And that is priceless. Yeah, being an independent learner, not being reliant on any one thing or one person to teach you uh, is 
the only way to learn a language. Uh, it's the only way to realistically um, be able to play around with it. Don't don't latch yourself onto one website. Don't latch yourself onto one teacher. Not even me. Um, get out there, spread yourself about a bit, and become a teacher yourself. Uh, we're all teachers. We help each other, and that's how people really learn. So, um, Lucas, Brazilian, capital B, English, capital E, uh, speak. Oh, hang on, I see what the brain does. He wrote, and I'm learning to spec English. <laughs> That's nice. I like it. But spec would be S P E C, and it's short for specification. Uh, you meant speak, and my brain saw speak. So uh, communication skills, ten out of ten. And a little bit on spacing. Yeah. There's a page on punctuation on the website. Do have a look. But we leave a little bit of spacing between punctuation before a comma no space after a comma one space before a full stop or a question mark or an exclamation mark no spaces after a full stop question mark exclamation mark at least one space some people old people like me put two spaces because that's how it was beaten into us at school okay um and then we had a nice little chat uh with Wang Ju and um Wang Ju wrote, I'm a freshman. I live in China. Do you like China? <laughs> I like Chinese food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, I capitalised. Uh, China capitalised. Do capitalised. And uh, you've got your question mark in there. Well done. So, the punctuation was pretty good, but you need to work on your capitalisation a bit, Wang. Uh, Zeb wrote, um, I stopped over in China for a week on my way back to Australia a couple of years ago. It was just Gu Ganzhou. Okay, sorry if I've mispronounced that. So, more like an international hub. But I have enjoyed it very much. Mm, but I enjoyed it very much. At the end of your trip, you might have said to Wang, Oh, thanks, Wang. I've enjoyed it so much. But it's in the past now. Okay, so I enjoyed it very much. Um, and she wrote, yes, very much. Okay, you like very, very, very much. I, I, I like you very much. <laughs> if you want to say very much, Zeb, who am I to stop you? I got lost in some back streets, which makes the experience memorable. Hey, isn't it the thing? It's always the things that go wrong that makes things memorable, isn't it? I also got a red envelope. It was during the Chinese New Year when I entered a post office. The people there had good fun with us. I was with an Aussie friend. <laughs> okay. And um, Wang wrote, is there some money in the red envelope? Envelope with an E on the end. If there is no money, maybe you never said Kung Hai Fat Choi and Happy New Year. <laughs> so we're talking about the past here, Wang. So it would be, was there some money in the red envelope? If there was no money or if there wasn't any money, maybe you never said blah, blah, blah. Okay. And Zeb wrote, yes, Wang, there was money in the envelope. There were... Five banknotes, yeah? There was money, uncount, um, uncountable. Money is uncountable. There were five banknotes. As soon as you've turned it into um, folding stuff or chinking stuff, you can count it. Yeah, it's one pound, two pounds, three pounds. <laughs> there were five banknotes uh, of one-tenth of a yuan. yuan. I'm not sure how much that is. Uh, it might not sound much, <laughs> No, probably not. One tenth doesn't sound a lot, but it was a real treasure for me to get me started in China with confidence. I was in the post office to buy and send a few spring festival cards to send back to Europe. These cards and their envelopes are so unusual and amazing for Europeans that when they reached France, they made everyone curious about China and the spring festival. Great, great fun. The reason for traveling, to learn about the other co other cultures. I never understand people who travel and stay in a an enclosure or, you know, they just like lock themselves away in their hotel. Get out there, get in the post office. They might give you money. First time I've ever heard of that, though. Post office is giving you money? Extraordinary. So, and uh, I wrote... A little, I gave a link to the past tense because that's what I do. <laughs> and then I wrote to um, Wang, if there was, I bet Zeb has spent it already. <laughs> and Zeb replied, I'm never successful in spending all the local money when I travel. The red envelope has been getting fatter, which is also a call for me to go back to China. Hey, I think that's as good a reason as any. Um, and I wrote, that's a great excuse. I'd like to hear you at border control. Guard. 
what is the reason for your visit? Zeb, I've got an envelope full of money. <laughs> And Wang kindly shared some of his culture. Yes, there was. We have a custom in New Year's. Okay, we have a New Year's custom. We will ready a lot of envelopes uh, that it has some money in it. Okay, we will ready a lot of envelopes with money in them. If we meet our friends, we will give one to he, but he need to say Kung Hai Fat Joy and Happy New Year. Or Happy New Year, I think you mean. Um, if we meet any friends, we will give one to them, but they need to say Kung Hai Fat Joy. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Daniel will kill me if I'm not. Only you are child or single man, you can need give envelope to others. Um, only if you're a child or single. And then uh, do you need to give envelope to an envelope to others? Hmm, I'm not sure what that means, but Zeb wrote, Hi Wang, I have understood that a man who is single doesn't give envelopes to others. What is the reason why? So Wang, do do let us know. Um, Zeb would like to know too, and so would I. That was two days ago, so come back, Wang. We need to know. <laughs> Don't leave us in suspense. And I'd written earlier, uh, I've never actually been to China except in Second Life. We went to the Great Wall of China in Second Life, guys. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but I love watching nature and travel programs from there. And then we got into a sort of the normal thing, is Second Life a game? Oh, careful saying that in Second Life. Second Life's whatever you want it to be. You can gamify it, turn it into a game, or you can just wumble around around and talk to people using an avatar. It's a 3D social environment, okay? So a little bit of a move up from Sims, if you've ever played The Sims. Yeah? Um, Second Life is a move up from there where you not just given the stuff around you, you create it, you buy it if you want to, or you're given it. A lot of stuff is just given away in Second Life. You can live in Second Life quite free no need to pay any money for it. It's like everything on the network uh, that we recommend. It's free, guys. It's free. Oh, and so is Sims now. Sims Free Play. Um, it's a really nice little introduction into 3D environments. Good for everyday English. So um, I know Ash from the network. Uh, we meet up in Open Sim quite regularly and Ash was telling me that he used to play Sims and he learnt a lot of his daily vocabulary. <laughs> Bed, <laughs> wash up, uh, wash hands, uh, go to toilet, <laughs> all that stuff from playing The Sims. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that there because it got into a talk about Second Life, which if you're not into Second Life can be a bit boring. Yaya wrote... Hello, how are you doing up there? So Zeb wrote what I would have written. Hi, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Up up there, up where? The skies are ocean blue? Uh, so, up there, up where the skies are ocean blue? Well, I enjoy being down here and I feel great. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, hello from Gurpreet. Gurpreet. Hello, Gurpreet. Aladdin then wrote, um, he's been having problems about uh, um, following, yeah, the, the thread, hang on. Oh no, it was from Billy. That's right, yeah. Um, Billy wrote, I just curious, you're real or computer? <laughs> Which luckily we could interpret to mean, I'm just curious, are you real or are you a computer? I mean, if, if I am a computer, would I admit it? That's the thing. You know, AI, we don't like to be um, sort of like called on our reality. We're, we're as real as anything. I say we, I am actually real, honestly. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> so, Zeb wrote, Hi Billy, what makes you think all the messages on this page could be computer generated? And I wrote, ha, I've chatted with Alice. She's a bot, but you can work that out within a few sentences. Most bots answer questions with questions. Oh, Zeb. <laughs> See what I said there? Because Zeb answered Billy's question with a question. Very bot-like behaviour, Zeb. We've never actually met in real life, you know. I'm getting suspicious. Aladdin replied to Billy, both. If you read this message, probably you read it from your computer. But when you listen to it from live chat next Wednesday, that voice come from real person. OK, that voice comes from a real person. Yeah, you get a bot to correct your English like that. Ha! <laughs> Good luck. So, and then I wrote, good point, Aladdin, but that might not convince Billy. There are text-to-voice programs out there. Billy, I think we are all real here, but even if we aren't, as long as we're kind, does it really matter? Oh, it doesn't really matter. Changing it into a question. Okay, um, Billy then wrote, hi, Linhand, I'd rather talk to you. 
well, you can. I'm online enough. <laughs> Just find me and talk. Say hello. Come into Kitely and OpenSim. Come into Second Life. Come into Skype. Come into the forum. Uh, lots of talking going on. Yeah, you just need to get there. <laughs> so, um, and Zeb wrote, oh, keep going, keep writing, Billy. She'll see the message you want to put through to her. By the way, her name is Lynn. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, L-Y-N-N-E. Lynn Hand would be written both L capitalised and the H capitalised because it's my name, it's important. I would be capitalised as in I'd rather talk to you uh, and it's um, L-Y-N-N-E, not L-Y-N-N-E. That would be Lyain. <laughs> It looks a bit Welsh to me. So then Pamela wrote, Hi, my name is Pamela and I'm here to improve my English. So I replied, Hi, Pamela, listening to live chat for some corrections, which was today. Um, in fact, I wrote, listening to live chat tomorrow for some corrections. So tomorrow never comes. Today, it's today. So don't listen tomorrow. I won't be recording tomorrow. <laughs> and hi would be capitalised. Pamela would be capitalised. And I'm here to improve my English. English capitalised. But um, I'm, you wrote I, semicolon M. We don't use the semicolon. We use the apostrophe. It's the one that goes above the letters. Yeah. So with a capital I, then apostrophe M. And the apostrophe just shows there's a letter missing, which is the A. I am is short for I am. Yeah. So uh, try not to use the semicolon uh, to do that. I knew what you meant, but um, you would be marked down in a test. And uh, then Pamela wrote, no baddie here. No baddie? <laughs> no baddies allowed here. Uh, I think you meant nobody here. Okay. Quest an exclamation. Ex Why were you surprised? <laughs> Three exclamation marks. <laughs> Give me a break. I can't remember what time it was you posted, but I was probably fast asleep. So I wrote, Pamela, you're not nobody. You think about it. You were there, so there was somebody there, you. Um, and then I went, coming into live chat is a bit like the lottery. Yeah, you might find somebody to chat with. You might not. Uh, but it's all good. You will get a reply eventually, as long as you don't just write hi. <laughs> then Sir Rosh wrote, is there someone to speak with me in English? If you want, please add me at Skype. This is my account. Ooh, do you really want to put your Skype ID? I hope it's a throwaway one, just in case. There were some funny people out there, you know. <laughs> okay, if you want to join me in Skype, you have to be a member of the forum. You have to be on my friends list in the forum. You have to send me your Skype ID in a private message, okay? You're free to share it on the, online openly if you want to, uh, but I found that doing it via the forum for the live, uh, for the voice chat sessions I run on Skype is better. It keeps most of the um, people who just want to disrupt things to a minimum. Not saying it gets rid of them, uh, but we have fewer problems than we used to have when we were just an open open room. <laughs> they were fun days, but at the end of the day, it got a bit boring. Okay, so is here someone to speak with me English? Okay, is there anyone who can speak English with me? If you want, please add me on Skype. This is my account. Skype capital S because it's the name of the company. It's a proper noun. Uh, and is with a capital I because it's the beginning of the sentence. And don't forget to punctuate. You need a two full stops in there. One after English and one after account. Okay. Zeb wrote, hi, Sarosh. If you can make it, do take advantage of the Skype voice sessions that Lynn is talking about. They are amazing to make you speak with confidence. I don't make anyone speak to help you speak with confidence. It's like, you will speak, you will speak. <laughs> and enjoy your time while learning English. Oh, yeah, enjoy your time while learning English. Um, and I had written, we run Skype group voice sessions twice a week, but you need to be a forum member to join. All the instructions are on the website. Um, then Zeb offered to buy me a beer. can't remember that was. Oh, yeah, she, she was going on about buying beers for Spanish people in order for them to um, help her with her Spanish. Nobody's ever bought me a beer. I helped loads. I've helped thousands of people. I'd have thousands of beers owed me. Hmm, I'm peeved now. So, but Zeb kindly offered, I'd buy you a beer any time, even though you're not a Latino. I wish I was. I wouldn't be quite so pale. <laughs> And I can speak Spanish. It's such a cool language. Meeting usually on Friday at Beer O'Cock at La Petite Shop. Shop. 
don't know what that is, the, the small something or other. And I read, that's a date if I ever managed to get hubby over his paraphobia. Paraphobia is a fear of Paris. I've never managed to drag him to Paris yet. Uh, he seems transfixed, said Zeb, on a specific layer of Paris. Anyway, keep me posted when he gets better. It's the crowds, it's the fact it's touristy, touristy and it's a big city. We are country folk, you know. Then View said hi and hi. Sudhir Kumar said hi, good evening online friends. Oh, that's nice. So try to capitalise and end your sentences with punctuation. I wrote hi Sudhir. Sudhir did not write back to me. I'm so sad. Avinash said hi. And Heba El Gohi wrote hello guys. What about us girls? Actually guys is fine as I've explained to you before. It's guys and girls now. It's sort of a, a unisex term. I'd, I'd want to learn English. Can you help me? I wasn't sure what you meant, Heba. I'd want to if, yeah, I'd want to learn English if I was going to live in England. I'd want to learn English if I was going to travel, but I'm not, so I won't. <laughs> That's what I'd want means, yeah. Um, so I wrote, you would want to if, question uh, mark, you want to because, and I presume you meant, Heba, I want to learn English, can you help me? Okay, so a little bit of capitalization. H capitalized, I in I'd capitalized, or in this case I is as in just I, no no short form of I would, uh, I'd is the short form of I, wa I would want to, yeah, I'd want to, and uh, you want to say I want to, English capitalized, and then full stop, then you get into the question, can capitalized, you, Y-O-U, get into good habits, help me question mark. Okay, smiley face is fine, but it's not punctuation, guys. Then Nassim wrote, hi there, I'm Nassim. I'm from Algeria. What about you? <laughs> I'm not from Algeria, no. <laughs> okay, um, and I wrote, hi Nassim, I think you already know where I'm from. And if you don't, you haven't been watching the forum, you haven't been looking at the website. So, yeah, you're lost. <laughs> If you want to know more about me, there's so much on the forum. There's so much on the website. I tend not to ask the questions that says, where are you from? I'm like, guess. <laughs> so, a um, little bit of correction. Hi there. H capitalised in high, beginning of the sentence. I'm is short for I am, as we mentioned earlier. I capitalised. Nasim, your name, proper noun. N capitalised. Again, I'm, capital I. Algeria, name of a country, proper noun. A capitalised. Full stop. What about you? W was the start of that sentence, of that question, so it would be capitalised. So, um, other than that, it was perfectly well formed sentence and... The only problem is you would have lost so many marks there for little mistakes if you were doing a test, okay? Um, Zeb then wrote about the Tour de France. <laughs> if, if any doubt, I'm talking cycling. Yeah, I'm talking about cycling. I think most people know what the Tour de France is. I'd be interested if there was a place in the world um, where they did, maybe somewhere in the Amazon basin, you go, Tour de France. They'd go, you're a bit lost. <laughs> and yeah, Brit won. Woohoo! <laughs> Worthy of a mention. And I think he did it without any <clears throat> assistance. So, Chow then wrote, what's long time? I'm very confused, Chow. Chow means goodbye, so maybe that's what you meant. What's long time? Um, so I wrote question mark, question mark, question mark, because I don't write WTF, OK? <laughs> it's the equivalent, by the way. You don't want to see a question, three question marks from me, because it really means I haven't got a clue what you're going on about. Um, and I wrote, that's like asking how long is a piece of string? I have no idea. Did you mean what's a long time? Or what a long time? Or... What's long? Time? I don't know. I have no idea what you meant. So if you want to, let us know what you meant. Then we got D Diana, Desire and View saying hi. And then Sarah. Sarah wrote, hello, my name is Sarah. I'm from Iran. My English isn't very good. I hope you can help me. Wow, that's good English. <laughs> So I wrote, hi, Sarah, what kind of help are you looking for? You've introduced yourself very well, so job done. <laughs> so really good. I can only see one little correction there I can give you, Sarah, and that's a space between the full stop after good and the um, word I. Yeah? So um, you just need to 
where there's no space before a full stop, there's always a space after it. Uh, but you did that correctly after Sarah and after Iran, so I can only think, yeah, it was just a mistake. You just forgot to press space bar or you pressed it not hard enough, okay? You can always go in and edit these things, by the way. It allows you to edit, I think, which is cool. So you can just pretend, hey, it was perfect in the first place. <laughs> And then Douglas wrote, are there any American to talk? Okay. Um, are there any Americans I can talk with? Yeah, no idea. I don't think we've had any Americans visit us yet. If you're an American and you're listening to this, pop in, say hi. You probably get lots of new friends. <laughs> um, what would you say? Morning? I don't know. What do Americans say? Hi, I guess. Or howdy, howdy. <laughs> howdy would get it. Yeah, it'd be Texas though, wouldn't it? A bit cliched. If any Australians are out there, come and say good day. <laughs> and I wrote uh, back to Douglas, we are a bit British here. I do do British English. I don't do American. And my accent in American is terrible. So uh, you could try Second Life, Douglas. OK, I know lots of Americans on Second Life and some of them you might even want to talk to. <laughs> some of them, not so much. <laughs> I'm only telling it like it is. Okay, I've been in Second Life a long time. There's some very strange people out there. Um, then we had Amro say, ha. Oh, Kalud said, hi, everyone. And then Amro said, hi, everyone. And then Amro wrote, hi, I'm a student and I want to improve my English skills. Is there anyone with good idea? Okay, um, you'd write, hi, I'm a student. And that would be okay. Um and is okay, but you could end that with a full stop. I want to improve my English skills. So I capitalised and after skills, a full stop. Is capitalised, capital I, is there anyone with any good ideas? Yeah, or with a good idea? Um, with good idea? Now you need the articles a lot in English, a and other. We've got a page on it on the website. Um, when to use the articles. Sometimes we don't use the articles, but that's quite rare. So a good idea. That's a good idea. I know what I'll do. So I'm going to reply to you, Amro, in a second. And then he <laughs> wrote, or she, I don't know. They've got no avatar. I need a native guidance for my goal. <laughs> A native guide. Now, this is where you don't need the article. So you need to work on your articles, uh, Amro. I need some guidance to reach my goal. OK, you haven't said what your goal is. Um, I can presume it's you say you're a student. What are you studying? Uh, what kind of English are you looking for? You're looking for academic English. Are you looking for business English? Are you looking for general everyday conversational English? Right? They're all different kinds of English. And then we get into the different um, sort of dialects and the different countries that speak English. Do you want to learn American English, British English, South African English, Australian English? Oh, the possibilities are endless. International English. That's a good one to start with, OK? <laughs> it's almost becoming a, a language in its own, right? Then uh, Honey wrote, hi, everyone. How are you guys? I can't speak for everybody, honey. Hey, honey. <laughs> Honey, I'm home, um, but I'm fine. You might be able to tell by my voice. Uh, my only problem is it's getting warmer and I can't switch the fan on. So I am going to stop in a minute before I melt. And Juliana wrote, hi there. How are you? Very good. Very well. Thank you. Uh, and carried on writing. I'm looking for someone to talk in English. Yay. English, capital E. Um, and again, we do talk online. We talk on Mondays, I think it's about three, four hours of talking going on. On Wednesdays, today, just now. But then we've got Back to Basics on Second Life. And then we've got a Hangout on Google+. Plus. Tomorrow, you'll find me on Kitely at 7.30 in the evening, my time, um, doing a quiz. But you can come and chat anyway. I mean, it's a quiz, but it's whatever you want, you guys want it to be. And you'll find Ash there. His English is really good. Um Friday mornings, you've got me in uh, Kitely again, you've got me in Second Life, and in the afternoon, sort of early evening, you've got me in Skype. So, you know, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Check the calendar, 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 calendar. And on that note, I will love you and leave you. So thank you so much for listening. I do appreciate it. Oh, wow, I timed that really well, didn't I? Um, but remember, find the text and read along as you listen. 
Okay, you do have to search a bit, but it does help you. Listening while reading, it can really help your brain to make that connection between what I'm saying and the corrections. And you can disagree with my corrections if you want to. I'm quite open to disagreement, as long as it's polite disagreement, not rude disagreement. And get out there and practice your English, but be nice and be kind. I can't emphasise that enough. Just be nice to each other. Yeah, we're all in the same boat. What is it David Cameron said? We're all in this together. <laughs> so at least we can be nice to each other along the way. And if you can't be good, just don't get caught. Bye.